The solar industry is on a really hot path and trajectory is, is steeper than any of us expected. And it is really being fueled right now by the federal tax incentives. So the people that have tax equity are, are jumping on board. There's tax credits for energy efficiency. There's tax credits for heat pumps. There's tax credits for solar. Up to 30% of the cost, which is pretty dramatic. That's one of the biggest incentives for residential solar systems. Individual reputable solar installers can help customers deal with those. We have a lot of information on our website for our Pacific Corp customers on how they can take advantage of those. We have a solar and storage incentive program that has a particular call out for people who are lower income Oregonians. We don't want only people who have resources to be able to have solar on their homes. We want to make that available to people who are moderate income or low income. So the incentive is much bigger for those folks. Another IRA program from the Biden administration, it's called Solar for All. Basically be able to incentivize people to put more solar on their businesses and their rooftops. Uh, again, with a big emphasis on low to moderate income because of equity issues. It is what it sounds like. It's going to be grants particularly targeted at low income groups and low income communities. It's very good for Southern and Eastern Oregon because we got a lot of sunshine and it's a good fit. We are trying to help people who want to be early adopters and need a little bit of extra help. But when you see that and you start to think about the ability to control something about your own environment, to be able to produce your own energy, to be able to get a little break um, annually on your energy bills. If the subsidies are deep enough, that's a really attractive proposal. So I think you are seeing people dive into that much more. Well, maybe you can map out for me how, when somebody has solar on their roof, they're actually getting a, a credit on their utility bill for that. Yeah, it's actually a, an old program in Oregon. I was involved in actually setting it up. It's called net metering. It's a program where if you put a solar project on your house, it basically runs your meter backwards. So you're getting paid the retail rate, whatever you're paying your electric utility, for that power that you're generating. It, it helps you pay for that system by every time you generate, you're making money. It's called net metering because it should only net out what you use. So if you only use 10,000 kilowatt hours a year, and you generate 10,000 hours, you're net zeroed out. Most of the customers are on kind of an export credit tariff, which means that for electricity that they produce over what they use, they can export that to the grid, and, and that tends to be used kind of in their local area, and they get a credit on their bill for that. One of the things that's been changing is when those programs were originally developed. They were developed so that customers were reimbursed at the retail rate. That did introduce a subsidy inside the residential class of customers. The way rates are calculated, that meant that customers that weren't using solar systems were subsidizing those that did. It was a conscious decision by utilities and the regulators to do that as an incentive to get rooftop solar started. And it's been very successful because the cost of systems have really declined. Utilities are moving toward a more cost-based model. That does reduce the export credit that customers get for their excess power. We want to avoid an interclass subsidy so that those customers are paying the full cost of their use because they're not only using the utility system to provide power to them when their system isn't generating, they're using the system to export energy you know, to the system for which they receive benefit. In trying to move that arrangement to a more cost-based system, we have faced a lot of questions because it results in a change in the economics of, of a solar-based home system. The big utilities are, have not always been as receptive to rooftop solar as they could be. Some of that is how does that move into the grid and how does it really benefit the distribution of energy within the grid? It's important that those systems be designed so that the costs that customers introduce onto a utility system are costs that they paid for. The retail rate has a whole bunch of other costs embedded in it. It's got customer service costs, it's got transmission systems, it's got generation. 
as we have worked to adjust the export credit, it has been a difficult discussion with some of our customers. We're making progress. That industry is a little bit more robust than it was in its early days. It's time to make those adjustments so that customers who don't choose to use solar are not subsidizing those who do. You know, one of the challenges, the big picture challenges we have, is that for our investor-owned utilities, there is money to be made in producing and using the, your own power. That's something that really benefits people who are ownership roles in your company. So it's not as attractive to buy energy that somebody else is producing for you. Now that we have clean energy goals, I am hopeful that the need to meet the goals will mediate that a little bit, because I just don't think that our big utilities can do this all with power that they're producing themselves. I'm hopeful that they will start to need to be a little bit more open to alternative energy sources that are produced by independent folks. Customers who want to generate some of their own power or all of their own power are free to do that. The only barrier to that is the cost of installing the system. Whether or not that makes sense for customers is a decision that they can make. We have programs that enable them to do that. Tax credits and utility incentives and other incentives are better than they've ever been. People are able to install large systems for about a third the cost after these credits and incentives. We see typical paybacks of two to five years on installations in terms of them paying for themselves with the energy savings from what would otherwise be spent to the utility company. Are there any like challenges when it comes to transitioning to solar? The cost, the initial investment is high. You have to think of the return on investment. Often that is based on the economic return on investment. I think the return on investment should also consider the social and environmental side. I mean, that's where you bring in the externalities and you think about holistically, what is this doing? And when you think about the challenges of climate change, we should put a monetary value on the impacts that we're seeing by not moving to solar and not moving to renewable electricity.